A time of anointing. Because he said it's the anointing that breaks the yokes. We can do whatever we want to. We can have the best of everything. It's the anointing at the end of the day. That's going to make the difference. And that's exactly what these people are testifying of. Is the reality of the presence and the power of God made manifest. Because we think of anointing many times as a... As an atmosphere. Anointing is the manifestation and the demonstration of the very life presence of God in our lives. It's Christ manifest. It is the reality of His person that is operating in and through us. And that's rearranging everything to the order of His authority in us as we give Him that authority in surrender you see God lives in you in the fullness of who he is but until you know that not biblically not because the scripture says so not because you've read it or somebody preached it until you know it by living experience until you've come to a place where it's become real to you that God lives in me and until your focus has turned away from everything in the external internally to understand that he's in me so i'm looking inwardly i'm living inwardly i'm giving myself inwardly i'm not looking for him up there somewhere god where are you lord let me pray let me try and worship let me try and reach you anointing is in you The presence is in you. God is in you. The problem is, He doesn't always get to live out of you. And that's where surrender comes in. Surrender is giving Him the opportunity to be God in you. Giving Him the opportunity to live through you. Giving Him the power and the authority to arrange everything in and around your life unto His authority. You see, but net dat hy in my leven gaan nie my omstandighede verander nie. Nie as ek om nie toelaat om dier my te leven nie. En dis wat die gestalte van God aanneming kry in jou. Because that means I've got to give myself to God fully and utterly. En soos hy gesê het, God weet weer om jou leven in te stuur om al die knoppies te druk wat nog uit orde is in jou. En die rede hoe kom hy dit doen, is so that you may identify them, that he may show you what still needs to change in you. And as those people come and those circumstances come and you give yourself to God and you come and done, dan verander jou gesintheid ten oor dit wat uitkom, want jy besef jy verskielik, my God, but I can't believe I just said that, Lord. I can't believe I just did that. Can that be in me? Oh, please help me. Change me. Oh God, I hate what I see. I can't believe this is in me. God bring thy mense in die omstandighede om my goed uit te bring in jou. So dat die geest van God in jou kan werk. So dat die goed uitgewerk kan word en Christus sy gestalte in jou dier kan kom en ingewerk kan word. That's the whole purpose of surrender. That's becoming Christ like. That's allowing the Jesus that lives in you to start living through you. En wanneer dit gebeur, dan het ons hierdie type van getuienisse wat uitkom wat sê, kyk wat het God gedoen. Look what God has done in my life. Look what's changed. And you know what? What the Lord told me is that the anointing in the last days upon the sons of God. Who's the sons of God? We should actually work through this, but then you're going alone very, very late. Romans 8.14 speaks about the sons of God, and he tells you who the sons of God are. He says, they that are led of the Spirit. What does it mean to be led? What does it mean to be led? What does that mean? Come fat my hand. Come fat my hand. Ok, nie man moet om recht vat, so ek weet nie hoe nie. Ok, le, okay lei my. Lei my, vat my daar. Lei my daar. 
Lei mai, nee nee, fat jij maar jij was Pablo je bent hier uit gaat. What does it mean to be late? Te gaan waar waar iemand je vat. Vat mij nou weer. Lei mij, gaan langs rechts voor, gaan. What does it mean to be late? It means I've given myself, my will, my choices, my decisions, my life. I've given unto God and said, lead me, guide me, teach me, will inside of me. Not my will, your will be accomplished in my life. That is being late. God says... That they that are led of the Spirit, they that walk in a surrendered place, they that live in a place where God's full authority can manifest through them, they are the true sons of God. It doesn't say that if you are saved, you're a son of God. It doesn't say that if Jesus lives in your heart, you're a son of God. It doesn't say that if you've given your heart to Jesus, you're a son of God. It says they that are led by him, they are sons. You see, actually, it should be the same thing. It should be the same if you were said, if you are born again, you're a son. Because being born again means that you've given your entire life into his hands. But we were never taught that way. Mens is geleer om hulle harte vir Jesus te gee, nie hulle levens nie. I give my heart to Jesus. And now I'm a child of God. No, you give your life to Jesus. And you're a child of God. You're a son of God. And now kom jy onder die heerskapie van God. En wanneer ek onder die heerskapie van God lewe, beteken het God het beheer oor my lewe. Dit beteken as ons in een woestijnland is, dan sal hy my bring by een spruit wat water gee. Dit beteken, as daar nie voorsiening is nie, sal hy die kraaie gebied om na my toe te bring wat ek nodig het, want ek leef onder sy heerskapie, en wat die Heere vir my gesê het, is in die laaste dag gaan die salving die verskil maak in jou leven. The anointing is going to make the difference. Ek wil vir jou lees precies wat God vir my gegeet, baie van julle is nie op Facebook, saam met my nie, sommige is, maar lees nooit my goed nie, ander like het weer, so, <coughs> maar kom ek gee dit vir jou, hoor wat het die heilige geest vir my gegee. Uh, this is what the Lord told me. Many are preparing to suffer. You know the last days, the hard times, the pastor touched on it, that's coming, dark days, suffering, turmoil, and most Christians are preparing either they're either running for the rapture because they they, they don't they, they're not prepared to go through the suffering you know so I want the rapture to get me out of here fast um, and it's motivated by fear which is wrong I mean I don't we will see it whether the Lord comes to pick us up before the time or afterwards it really doesn't matter it shouldn't matter because why are you afraid Why are you afraid that God's going to let you down? This is what the Lord told me. Many are preparing to suffer. I'm preparing to reign. I'm preparing to reign, brother. And sons in the last days will exhibit their father's life and kingdom in the midst of a world filled with despair and desperation. Sons! Sons are going to demonstrate what Elijah demonstrated. Sons are going to demonstrate what Elisha demonstrated. Sons are going to walk in the midst of a world in total desperation. They don't know what to do when everything's going wrong. Sons will walk in the dominion and the authority of their father in heaven and demonstrate his power. They'll walk supernaturally. They won't be governed by the laws of this world. Why are you scared? Why are you afraid? But those who know their God shall do great exploits. The anointing upon your life 
is going to make the difference. And the anointing upon your life is the anointing that flows from within you. And the anointing that flows from within you is Christ being allowed to live through you. So if you're going to be a son in the last days, yielded, surrendered, in obedience to God, giving yourself to God, the power of God in you, Christ in you, is going to lead you, He's going to teach you, He's going to reveal Himself through you, and you're going to walk in the demonstration of the Son of God, and His power, the revelation of the Spirit that led Him, that same Spirit in you, is going to lead you, and you're going to walk in total victory, in total blessing, blessing, listen to me, God's going to bless you because that's what happened to Elijah. Elijah didn't have like some rations. They didn't drop him a can of tuna every day. They brought him steaks, fresh meat, fresh bread, fresh water. The whole place was in famine. I mean, there was nothing in the land. What happened to Elisha when famine hit the land? What happened? God sent him to a widow. If you read that portion carefully, you'll find out that the widow was expecting him to come. Because the Lord said to Elijah, I prepared a widow for you. That means the widow knew he was coming. I prepared a widow for you. She's waiting for you, brother. Go there. She's going to take care of you. When Elijah arrives, what does he find? He finds this widow collecting the last few pieces of sticks because she's she's going to make a final meal and die. That's what he finds. And she's waiting for him. He's going to her for a miracle because God said, I prepared a widow for you that's going to take care of you during this famine. And he arrives and she's waiting for him. Please come, man of God. I'm having my last meal and I'm going to die. They're waiting for each other. Do you see that? She hasn't got food for him. She's got a last meal. But God says, I prepared the widow for you. She's going to feed you. So they're both looking to each other for a miracle. But the Lord ordained it that way because through Elijah's obedience, the power and the authority and the anointing that was upon his life was going to change both their circumstances and both their destiny. He said, bring me that food first. And she did. He challenged her and she challenged him. This is my last meal. What are you going to do about it, prophet of God? All right. Bring me your last food, woman, and I'll show you. They challenged each other. And then the power of God fell and he said, now bring me that thing and just bring the cans. It's not going to stop flowing. The oil will not stop and the meal will not stop. And they both came out of the famine fine because of God. I'm telling you in these last days, from this Sunday onwards, the anointing is going to be released in your life If you're going to be a son, if you're going to be obedient from this Sunday. And the Lord manifested here this morning, didn't he? See how the meeting started? The word for this meeting, and I can't go through all of it now, is the anointing in your life that's going to touch everything and every circumstance and cause your destiny to come into fulfillment. For those of you like you, That the Lord gave a specific word. Listen to this. How do you come out of your wilderness? When God leads you out of your wilderness. Of being formed and molded behind the mountain. And on the potter's wheel. You don't come out with parched lips. And a broken spirit. Thankful to have survived. This for yellow or quirk. When God leads you out of your wilderness, you're not going to come out of there and say, Oh, Alter, I simply thank God I'm still alive. That's not how He's leading you out. You come out triumphantly and anointed. You come out blessed and crowned with His glory. You come out miraculously to shock the world around you into the reality of an unfamiliar realm of supernatural power. 
favor, glory being evident and evidently expressed in you. And the scripture for that is, He returned out of the wilderness full of the Spirit and of power. And God says, be prepared, you coming out and moving forth, anointed, favored, and victorious. Take it in Jesus' name. That's how you're coming out. You're not coming out begging. You're coming out with an anointing because your season did mold you, did break you, did form you, did prepare you. And now the fullness of God is coming to fill the vessel that He's prepared. You've only just begun. Spread your wings. The anointing is going to lift you. You can hard up so nooit van tevore nie. Jy gaan profiteer soos nog nooit van tevoor nie. God gaan jou visie wees, gezichte, heerlijkheid. Dis tyd vir die seens van God om op te staan. It's your season. It's your season. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. And we're going to close this. We will go through this because it's a teaching. It's going to bless you. But it's a, it's a teaching we've got to work through when we have time. And my two minutes is up, brother. <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Ons kom uit in die oorwinnende kracht van die Here. Die salving van God is op ons. Halleluja. Halleluja. Ek raak excited want het lyk vir my jylle kom ook nou by. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward next Sunday to see all of you here. With buddies. Bring the buddies. They need to come free. Bring the friends. Ek is so jammer vir hulle wat uitverloor het vandag. Allemaal wat vakantie gevat het. They missed it by a mile. Anders wou dit nog uitstel. Dit het ons gelukkig. Ek het net die kloos met jou smaak. Daar is hy. Kom ons gooi om. Because he lives. Father, we just bless you, we love you, we celebrate you, we worship you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you've accomplished in every life here today. Thank you for a new beginning, a fresh start, Lord. We hear the gun being set off for a new race to be run in this season, a race where we will not grow weary, where we shall not be tired, but where we are going to soar on the wings of the Holy Ghost as you propel us into our destiny, into our season, into our moment, into our time, and as we press into realms of glory to magnify you, and that you may be glorified and exalted in all that you made us to be, and in all that we've become, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now let your anointing rest upon us as we depart from this place, each one, to our own home and to wherever we may go, let the glory of God within us be expressed and magnified. May we travel in that cloud and may we remain under that beautiful spout where the glory flows out in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen Amen. and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.